Now, there's a number of different ways that you can access blogs. Of course, you can go to the individual web pages. So I could jump over to a particular blog for one of our classes. And there's the blog. And I could remember to go here on a regular basis and see if there is a new post. However, if you like to read a number of different blogs, then you're going to want to take advantage of a blog reader. And a blog reader is simply a program. And this could be a program you install on your computer, or it could be an online program that goes out to the different websites you like. It looks for new blog posts, and it pulls the information over to the blog reader. So they're quite convenient. Now, um, there's one called Blog Lines, which I don't use really regularly. I did create an account there just to kind of test it out because it's got a good reputation. It's quite popular. And on the Blog Lines account, you subscribe to different blogs that you like. And then, of course, you can click on those categories, and you can see the new post. And I could click over to a different blog, a list apart, and I can see what information they have over there that's new. And using a blog reader is an extremely efficient way of reading a bunch of different web pages. I don't have to go to the websites anymore. I tend to use uh, Google. so. I've used, uh, with a Google account, you can create a custom Google homepage like I've got here, and you can uh, have it bring in blogs and your Gmail account and a bunch of other different things on here. But I'm going to jump over to my Google Reader account. And the layout is pretty similar to blog lines. you got a list of your blogs over here on one side. And as I click on different items, the posts show up over on the right side. I typically use Google Reader. Um, I don't think it's better or worse than blog lines. I'm just, you know, I've got it set up. It's got all my features, so I'm pretty content with it. Um, so now, that's about it for using a blog reader. You subscribe to different blogs, and then, of course, you can read through them. So I can jump over to my environment category, to the tree hugger blog, and I can read all the new posts related to, those, to that particular blog without actually having to go to the website. Now, if I want to go to the website, there's a link for it. Or I can click on the title of a particular blog post, and that will take me to the post web page. So it takes me to the blog and to the web page for that particular post. So I could read it in detail and perhaps see other information that wasn't included in the blog feed. And if you don't have a Google account, then you can head over to google.com slash reader. And, of course, it's already signing me in, but let me kind of show you if I sign out what it looks like. There you go. Welcome to Google Reader. And you can sign in. If you already have an existing Google account, you can do so. So that's part one, just getting a feed reader that you find easy to use and convenient. Now that I have a feed reader installed on my computer, or basically I have access to an online feed reader, now I want to find out how can I find feeds. Now this is actually going to be pretty easy. Think about the websites you go to on a regular basis. Well, the reason you probably visit those sites on a regular basis is because the content is frequently updated. And websites that have frequently updating content will very often have a a feed called an RSS feed or an XML feed or sometimes called an Atom feed. Well, these feeds can be imported into your blog reader of choice. Blogs are extremely popular, so even though you don't think your site may have one, there's a good chance that it really does. So I'm going to head over to a website called The Onion. Now, The Onion is simply a comedy news-related website. And you can try to find out if they have a feed. Now, you see up here in the top left corner of my page, I get this little RSS subscribe button. That's an add-on script for Firefox, the web browser. So what it does is it scans the web page, looks for the feed, and it puts a little button right up there in the top left corner for me so I don't have to hunt for it. But most people won't have that set up, So which means you'll have to do a little bit of hunting. Now, the first time you go to a web page and you're curious if they have a feed, um, usually what I would suggest is to just kind of scroll down to the very bottom of the page. And you'll often see these kinds of things here. Um, this is what really, this is what the Onion web page has provided. They have this little feed button. And you'll see different things. You'll see the word feed sometimes. You'll see this little orange feed symbol. Sometimes you get a little orange button that says XML or RSS on it. But different web pages use different things. So this is what they've got here. And if I click on this, 
I get to a special page just for me. Since I use the Google Reader and I'm logged into my Google account, uh, I, as soon as I click on a feed page, I get this very convenient page where I can add it to Google. Do I want to add it to my Google home page? Nah, not really, but I'll add it to my Google Reader. All I need to do is click that button. And now, you can see over here, the Onion feed has been added to my reader. That's all I had to do. I had to go to a web page, find the feed button, click on it, and then choose to add it to my reader. And so now I can read all of the, uh, the funny stories at the Onion's. Uh, news site without actually going to their site. The stories come to me. Now, if that doesn't happen automatically, I can add a subscription manually. And there's an add subscription button here for my Google Reader. And every blog reader will have some kind of way that you can add a subscription manually. So let me kind of show you how that would work. I'll jump over to another web page and let's see if I can't uh, find another blog here. I'll just go to blogger.com. I really just want to click on a random blog, so I'll just click on next blog here. Personal blogs, especially ones at Blogger, they, they generally will have a feed, although the person who creates the blog may not have put a convenient button there for us. Now once again, these little buttons up here in the top left corner, those are buttons created by my particular Firefox script. So. Um, very often they are here, but I'll click on next blog. Any okay, so now I'm at another blog here. Um, pop, pop conservative politics, pop culture, and opinion to waste your time with. This is not an unusual topic for a lot of blogs out there. And I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find if the user has made it obvious how I can subscribe. And go to the bottom of the page. Now this person just has a little link here, Posts and Atom. Atom is another kind of format for blog uh, feeds or RSS feeds. Now if I were just to click on this once, I'm likely going to be taken to my very convenient Google Reader page with my one button add-on. Now that's always the, the nicest way to add it, but I want to show you a more manual way. So let me go back to this. Now instead of clicking on it once, I can right click on this and I can copy the link location. That'll be the web address for the actual feed. And on my Google Reader, I can go to Add Subscription, and I can Paste. And let's kind of see this for a moment here. So in this feed, it's going into a folder, which is pretty normal. Sometimes your feed addresses will end with a .xml extension, which is actually probably the most common thing. And I'll click Add. And now, Pop Conservative blog is now part of my blog reader. And so I have, I can read all about this person's uh, political opinions and opinions on pop, pop culture. Okay. All right, so that was pretty easy too. So I know how to use a blog reader. Just find one, subscribe to it, and start to experiment. Finding an RSS feed is becoming extremely easy these days because pretty much everybody who has a website is going to have a blog and they're also going to have a feed uh, associated with it. So then the issue is just, well, how do you post a comment to a blog? Now to do that, I'm going to jump over to one of my blogs here. Okay, and here's a blog for a class. Now, if you're looking at a blog, you'll often see some area for comments. And different ones will have slightly different procedures, but the main concept is the same. You basically click on a link so that you can add a comment. Um, I'll go ahead and click on this comments area. Okay, and this is test comment for this blog post. You want your comment to be related to the post, not the blog overall, but to the post that you're actually commenting on. Okay, now this blog does not allow anonymous comments. This is pretty normal. Most blogs, when you post a comment, will require that you use some kind of a username or password. Uh, so you may have to register an account at the blog before you can actually post a comment, which is one of the reasons I went for this one. Uh, my particular blog allows anybody with a blogger account to simply post in their username. If I go back to this blog, I now see that this particular post has one comment. And I could click on this to view it, or if I were to click on the permalink, or basically this is a hyperlink for just that one blog post, 